Over the sporting years, you could say Australia has been up and down in swimming, but never without its champions. The list headed by the likes of Dawn Fraser and John Hendricks, Ilsa Conrad, Stephen Holland, Shane Gould and Tracy Wickham goes on and on. We've had an almost constant stream of world beaters and gold medal winners. Where have these brilliant Australian swimmers kept coming from? Are they born or made? Good questions. For years they've literally come out of nowhere, with the help of the odd enthusiastic parent, teacher or local swimming coach. But these days, there appears to be two main sources of potential gold medal winning water babies. The high-tech, government-funded Australian Institute of Sport and an old-fashioned Queenslander the swimming world has dubbed the motivator. Don't break stroke, that's good going. Good leading, you two. At 43, Laurie Lawrence has to be the oldest kid in the swimming world, which might be the reason he's so outstandingly successful at producing champions. I suppose he's like a druggie, he's hooked. <laughs> he's gone, you know. He's absolutely gone. That's what we want, mate. I want you to get into a bit of pain. Come on. You're a pussy or what are you? Come on. Good and kick the cat. Come on. <laughs> what Laurie does is he just relates so well with the kids that when they get up there on the block, they feel like they've let him down as much as themselves or family if they don't do well. And the joy and the tears are shared, you know, with Laurie as well as is with the kids. If they laugh, he laughs. If they cry, he cries. I've never ever seen anything like that. This will um, probably help you remember the man they call guy. the motivator. Yeah, he's an incredible the guy. madman in the Akubra hat who made a spectacle of himself <laughs> at the LA Olympics in 1984. I think he's very happy, don't you? I'm a patriot. I love to stand up for the flag. I, I'm... People call me a weirdo. My wife calls me a weirdo a whole lot too. One scribe wrote after the uh, LA Games, who was that maniac belting our swimmers over the head with his rolled up program? Well, that was me, George. Some people would say it's only swimming after all. How the heck can a grown man get so excited about it the way you do? Yeah, I get excited, but I actually feel that I'm part of the kid because I've, I've exercised with that swimmer. I've been up at 4.30 in the morning with that swimmer. I've uh, lived, breathed, ate swimming with the, with the kids. Anyone break stroke, we start again. No weaknesses, please. If you're expecting a modern scientific approach from Lawrence, then you've come to the wrong pool. His coaching and training methods are damned near old hat. Basically, a case of get fit and get in there and win. Don't let the boys get away. Come on, Riley. The Lawrence philosophy is just as straightforward. Winning sure beats the hell out of losing. When I was a younger coach, I, I did, I, I'll be honest, I drove a lot of kids out of the sport by saying, you must win, you've got to be a winner. And kids were getting second and third in the state and national titles and coming back and giving the sport away because they couldn't please me, they weren't a winner, they were second in the state or second best in Australia and they were giving it away. So I, then I reviewed my thoughts on winning and what is actually winning. I mean, you can win in two ways. You can touch the end of the pool first and be a winner, the ultimate winner with the gold medal around your neck and all the rah-rah and yahoos that go with it. Or two, you can do the very best that you can. That is by beating your personal best time. If you've done everything right and you get beat, well, you know, come back to me and I'll shake your hand. But if you get in the pool and you show no guts whatsoever and you just let someone beside you beat you and you've missed four or five training sessions and you come back crying to me, I don't want to know anything about it. Big breath. Holy poly. When I was 14, nearly 15, Laurie came to me and said, Steve, you've got the chance of being the world champion. And I thought he was full of hoo-ha. He made the dream come true. He made me a world champion, a world record holder. So, obviously, I owe him. Laurie Lawrence has coached just about every Australian world record holder in the last 10 years. The legendary fish, Steve Holland, among them. At one stage, Holland held 13 world best times. These days, he's out of competitive swimming, teaching kids how to stay alive in the water. Nathan, you're next. But, you know, when it comes down to fair income swimming, and he knows what's got to be done, he knows the hard work's got to be there, and that's as simple as that. There is no easy method, there is no baloney, there is no crap as to say. Look, if you want to be a good swimmer, you've got to work your ass off. Simple as that. Making the team is really only the beginning for us. And I won't be satisfied unless all you people win gold medals. When you're happiest is when you're winning. 
And that's what we've got to do. We've got to make sure that we're bloody winners when we get to the Commonwealth Games. Lawrence has been around for almost 20 years, but his considerable coaching skills went virtually unnoticed until his swimmers helped save Australia from humiliation at both the Brisbane Commonwealth Games and the LA Olympics. Good flight. Keep kicking. That's good. It's good shot. Good legs. Right now, the Australian team is training for the next Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh later this year, and nearly a quarter of its swimmers come from Lawrence's Brisbane squad. Good. So is a champion necessarily a great swimmer or just a particular kind of human being? Well, a bit of both. I mean, you've got to be a good swimmer before you can swim fast. But then as well as that, it's not much use being looking the prettiest swimmer in the world if you've got no guts and you're not prepared to have a go at it. Mate, we send the men, they send the men out to war first, don't they? Edinburgh hopes, like the current golden boy of Australian swimming, John Seaborn, Mean Machine giant Neil Brooks, the fastest 14-year-old freestyler in the world, Jenny Burke, Olympian Susie Bomer and Brett Stocks, all owe their place in the team to their motivator, Laurie Lawrence. I, I think swimming is a great sport. I think that the kids who swim get those values, you know, the persistence, the, uh, the heartbreak, the disappointments, the elation. All these things that are part of life and part of living. And I'm hoping that, that a lot of the young people that I associate, and I'm sure it keeps me young, that I'm associated with uh, are going to grow up to be great human beings. You know, it's so got to be a like fun. you'd like to think that you're keeping life as normal for them as possible? Yeah, people mightn't think that getting up at 4.30 in the morning and going to the pool at 5 is normal. Exactly. Uh, it's unusual, true, but... Uh, they wouldn't do it if they didn't like it. I mean, everyone does unusual things. It mightn't look much, but this is ultimately the nursery of Australian swimming. Suburban carnivals where international stars compete alongside unknown young hopefuls. Bell Barry on the outskirts of Brisbane is the kind of place where all our young champions once paid their dues. I think it's part of life to achieve. That's the nature of the beast. And the kids, they, they're the same thing, they want to achieve. Now, the difference with my younger kids, they all believe that one day they can represent Australia. Because my older people are already representing Australia and some of my middle kids, 13 and 14 year old girls, are, are representing Australia. Now, these younger kids believe that they can do it one day. Hey, good, good, good job. First. At the moment there are 80 odd members in Lawrence's super squad. From the likes of Scotty, a hot contender for the Bell Bowery 25 metres under eight butterfly title to Olympic champion Neil Brooks. These days, Brooks is a new dad, and perhaps the not-so-mean machine. But he's still turning in world-class times. Brooksy, who's going to change his nappy? That's what I want to know. He really cares, and, and you know, that's something you, you can't act and something you can't put over to just anybody. You can generally tell when someone is genuine with your cause, and he is. his interest is to see you swim fast and that's what makes him feel good, that's what makes him happy. He's salt of the earth, you know, he's a bit off the wall in some of the, his methods and, and his ways, as, as everyone knows, but then again, I am a bit too, you know. Neil, you've said he's a, he's a bit off the wall. What's the most off the wall thing you've seen him do? Well, you know, I couldn't believe it. One day this little kid got out of the water and said, uh, I've got a bit of a pain in my right shoulder and Laurie's reached over to a brick wall, run his fingers down the run his knuckles down the wall, so took all the skin off and there was blood pouring out his knuckles. He goes, that's pain, mate, get back in. The little kid got in, he was up and down like this. I couldn't believe it, you know. Let's face it, becoming a champion is a long, hard slog. And by the look of it, being a coach is no Sunday school picnic either. Come on. Come on. Laurie Lawrence, who by the way functions with only one lung, on. is willing to have a go at any of the torches himself, short of leaping in and actually swimming for his kids. As he tells them, 
Once they hit the water, on. they're on their own. Well, if you tell them it's fun, they pretty soon they believe it. If you tell them no how much it hurts. It's going to hurt, but you've got to appreciate pain. You've got to, what I try to tell them, welcome pain. Because you know when the pain starts to come, that's when it's doing you good. And, and nothing's going to hurt as bad as getting beaten at national championships by two hundredths of a second or three hundredths. You can't, that pain stays with you forever. Everyone's going to have a battle. You've got Anthony Moss who kicked your ass here at the Queensland Championships. Jono? His approach is a mad mix of fun and fatigue. I love this. A little bit. Yeah. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Come on. Come His on. facilities are Spartan to say the least. Lawrence's rented gym could never compare with the high-tech equipment available at sports factories like the Australian Institute of Sport in Canberra. But his hyped-up scrubbers, as he calls them, end up stroke for stroke with champions produced anywhere in the world. If the country likes to revel and go, hooray, when our kids win, when, when people I'm coaching are winning at the Olympics or at the Commonwealth Games, well, I'd like to get some sort of support that would come in, some funding, government funding, that would go on, and in addition to what the Institute's getting, to the clubs, to the grassroots, the people. Because if we're not producing the young kids, the inst and, and doing a good job with the young kids, the Institute, who are, are looking after the older elite athletes, are not going to have them anyway. Right. Drum scotch and, a, and an autographed hat from all the boys in the game. Georgie Negus is on this too. While the Australian Institute of Sport is getting its millions from the federal government, Laurie Lawrence and his boys are funding themselves the hard way. Eight tickets left, any more in this bar before we go. Support your Commonwealth Games representatives. In this afternoon's work, if they're really lucky, they'll make about a hundred bucks to keep the Lawrence squad afloat, so to speak. I hate going out onto the side of the road and rattling a tin can to get 20 cents to send my kids to nationals. If they don't want to have champion swimmers, OK, don't support us. But if we're going to compete with the East Germans, with the Russians, with the Americans, with the French, with the Canadians who are just pouring millions into their club programs, then if they want us to get back to the good old days of the 1956 and 60s when our kids were winning plenty of gold medals, then they have to be prepared to dip their hands in the pocket and help the people who are doing the job. That's good. Now, keep your, hold your form. We're going 45 seconds. It's on the world record. And I want you to hold your form. That's Laurie good. Lawrence's success as a swimming coach has lifted him almost to the status of a sporting folk hero. He's the boisterous motivator, a 150 percenter. And Lawrence expects the same kind of commitment from every one of his champions and would-be champions. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. Finish in without breathing. Two, one, time. Good job. That's the way to do it. I don't believe that you burn out. You can't burn out physically. Maybe you can burn a little bit out mentally. If you, That's why I try to make the whole thing fun. The ones that burn out are the ones that are losing, George. You use a lot of slogans to psych your kids into action. Which one do you think sums up your approach? Well, a lot of them laugh, but I think only the pain of a hard workout can save you the agony of defeat. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.